This is Talk Cricket Live. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and like and comment below. Here's your failed medium-fast right-armed bowler, Mark Keane. Hello and welcome to Talk Cricket Live, but actually live. <laughs> it's only the second time we've been live. Uh, but the idea is that uh, during the test match, what we're going to do is um, 9 o'clock every night, British summer time, during the test match, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to have your say on what's been going on. Now, this may seem a little bit strange to you, uh, but there are a lot of channels, and I've done this with other channels in the past as well, where they have a presenter in video, live, and um, the viewers can call up on the phone. So all you have to do if you want to have your say about anything to do with the test match is call on that number. Um, do I just sort of point? Yeah, if I, yeah, there you are. I'm sort of pointing towards it there. There you are. 0161 in the UK, 0161 818 2009. I tried to make the zeros into cricket balls, but it, it wasn't having it. I'll try that for tomorrow. So 0161 818-2009. It's just a normal um, landline number call, and I'm suspecting it won't cost you a penny, especially if you call from a mobile. So if you want to talk about the cricket, about the test match, that's all you do. Or you can also get in touch with me via um, your Skype account, and all you have to do is uh, just connect with Pan on Fire. That is a long story. Why is it called Pan on Fire? It is a long story. So what I'm going to do, if we, we don't get anybody calling up or anybody saying anything or asking any questions or making any comments in the comments box, I'll just do, I'll just say hi guys down there, just a little thing there, there we go. just to sort of get you started. There we go. Just say hello. And, uh, you know, we, we can, you can put questions in there or comments as well if you want to. Uh, but what I'm going to do is basically do a bit of a 10 minute show. And if uh, if we get some calls, this is the, only the first time we've ever tried this on Talk Cricket Live. So it's quite possible. I, I've discovered with other channels, sometimes it takes people uh, a while to you know get the idea of, of, of how it all works. You won't be in vision. It'll, it's just like a radio phone-in. I was a radio phone-in presenter for 30 years. And uh, that's basically what, uh, what we're sort of aiming for. But with me, uh, old ugly me in the camera. So... Uh, if you want to, anywhere in the world, probably the best thing to do is Skype me on Pan on Fire. Uh, anywhere in the UK, it's 0161 818 2009. So, some of the things which you uh, might want to talk about regarding the test match are as follows. Um, do you think it is right that Anderson and Broad should have been uh, in the test at the same time? Because there's lots of talk about because well, Anderson's 38 and you know I'm pretty sure his birthday's in June so he must be nearly 39 by now wow and uh, apparently there have been some um, scientific uh, investigation into his fitness level and it says he's as fit as he's ever been if not fitter so so I guess you know some people when they're 38 can still be fairly fit so um, he seems to be fit Stuart Broad is a little bit younger, maybe 34, possibly 35. Uh, he still seems pretty fit. Uh, and they both are great bowlers. And between them, they've got, you know, getting on for sort of um, 1,150 wickets, test wickets between them. So my answer to that is I think putting Broad and Anderson in is a good thing. Why? Because I think, like Michael Vaughan says, you have to play your best team. You really do. Uh, and that's what I think we should be doing. And there's no doubt at all that Broad and Anderson are the best team. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about if you want to. I would prefer to um, uh, say that, uh, from my viewpoint, that Broad and Anderson together is a good thing. So what else? Should we have had a spinner in the side? Some would argue, and I think it's quite a good argument, that we have a spinner in the side, and that is Joe Root. Um, because he's more than a part-time spinner. Uh, even though he didn't get any wickets today, uh, and uh, you know New Zealand got 250-odd for three, uh, Joe Root didn't get any wickets. However, um, he did contain them. He seemed to contain them pretty well, uh, which is more than some of the, the bowlers did. So should we have had Jack Leach in? 
Uh, my view on that is actually, no, we shouldn't. I think Joe Root is a good enough spinner, especially on this wicket. And, of course, we're not going to be bowling last, are we? We lost the toss. <laughs> that was our first mistake, losing the toss. The toss is a big thing, which leads me on to my next next point. But, first of all, should we have played Broad and Anderson together? Give me a call, 0161 818 2009. Should we have had a spinner or a Jack Leach? 0161. 818-2009. I know we've got quite a few subscribers from India. We'd, uh, If you're up, we'd love to hear from you as well. I think you probably might still just about be up. Cricket fans stay up all night anyway. So if you want to uh, Skype people from uh, India, it's pan on fire. So those are the first two things. Should Broad and Anderson uh, have played together? And should we have had a spinner? And it brings me to the next point, and that is, should we... Um, should we do better at winning the toss? I'm being facetious, really. Uh, does the toss make that much difference? I really think it does. On a, a nice, sunny day, hottest day of the year in the UK, does winning the toss make a difference? I think it makes a huge difference. And therefore, should we in some way change it? So that it's not about the toss. It's like, you know, maybe you have a toss to see who chooses first and then the other team chooses and, the other, uh, 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 and do it like that. It just seems a little bit fairer because it is possible for one captain to win five tosses in uh, a five uh, match test series. Uh, and that doesn't seem fair really, does it? So that is something else you can give me a call about 0161 818 2009. You can also phone if you're abroad as well. It's plus 44161. So you just take the zero out. So... Uh, squad rotation, this whole idea, because part of this is the all-rounders. These two subjects uh, are linked together, really, because we have um, the likes of uh, Ollie Robinson, who did pretty well today. I, I think he was a little bit lucky. Um, his second wicket was pretty good, but his first wicket, let's face it, was luck. It was batsman error and it was luck because he played it onto the stumps. And he was. I'm pleased for the guy, of course. Uh, and I'm pleased for uh, Bracey as well, getting his his uh, first shot at Test Match Cricket. However, what I would say is that we are missing the all-rounders. We are missing the Chris Wokeses. Obviously, Ben Stokes is injured. The Sam Curran, because he can bowl and he can bat, not just a bit, but a lot. Even the Moen Alley, as you see now, there would have been a great option. Because Moen Alley gets a lot of spinning wickets and sometimes he has a real purple patch. And he does better than Joe Root. And he's not that far off Jack Leach in terms of, uh, of skill, I believe. So we could have had Moeen Ali, who was also um, open for England in the batting. So I think we're missing a trick there. I don't think the squad rotation works. And I do think that we should have had at least one, if not two, all-rounders. I still can't understand why the likes of Chris Wokes. And for that matter, Joss Butler and Johnny Bairstow weren't playing. Play your best team. OK, you did with your opening bowlers. Um, they weren't that effective today, but play your best team. Um, yeah, what I've written down on my piece of paper, probably realise it's really, I can't, I can't read my own handwriting, unfortunately. Uh, I said, uh, I don't recognise the team. You know, this is an England team, but I was looking at it on paper and I was thinking, it doesn't really look like an England team. Uh, Dan Lawrence, for example, I don't feel that he's part of the England setup. And yet, you know, no one even sort of questioned that. He had a really, really good score on his debut, as the New Zealanders call it, um, a, a while ago. But, you know, since then, he hasn't done a great deal. I don't really know why Dan Lawrence is in the team. And you see, you could have put Moe in Alley there and you've got a spin option as well. Um, I don't think Chris Silverwood is doing it. For me, he's not doing it. Um and I, I, I'm a little bit worried that now not only is he the coach, he's also the um, chief selector now that uh, Ed Smith has gone. So that does worry me a little bit. Oh, well, uh, what else have I written down here? Oh, a few other things. Yeah, Ollie Robinson. Uh, yeah, he, he's. I, I think it was right, actually, to give him a chance. He, he, you know, he seemed to warm to it quite nicely. Um, reviews, I think, uh, 
that the, the review we had at the beginning was nonsense. You know, Bumble, one of the best commentators, if not the best commentator. In fact, if you look at my video about commentators, you will see that I say Bumble is the best commentator. Um, and, you know, even he could see, and God know how, how far away he is, without the replay, just watching live from however far back it was, Bumble said, that, that I wouldn't review that because they were only and ahhing about review. And he was saying, no, nah, I wouldn't review that. I wouldn't review that. But they did. And uh, lo and behold, outside the line of the leg stump. So I think they need to have, uh, I don't know, a bit more of an idea about, you know, w what they're going to review. All right. So if you'd like a comment about any of those things, uh, Devin Conway, that was the other thing I, I just uh, jotted down on my piece of paper. Uh, what a revelation he is. How come he's not played test cricket before the age of 29? Uh, and there were the, the New Zealand guys uh, were going through his stats for T20 and ODI and, uh, you know, a red ball cricket generally. Um, and, you know, he was uh, he's had some fantastic averages. And lo and behold, that's one of my favorite phrases today. Uh, there he is with 140 odd uh, runs. So. um I think we're in a bit of a dodgy situation. I did say in my video earlier today that I thought that, or even last night, I think, when we were doing the, the live test, I was saying that I think it's a little bit of 50-50. Uh, so um, I think New Zealand are, are in the stronger position. I think they had the better days cricket. Uh, and I think England will have to do something uh, pretty lively to get, uh, to get over that. So we've got quite a few things to discuss there. Uh, if we get any calls, then uh, I, and I would love to hear from you, whatever you want to say about the test match. Uh, otherwise, we'll just carry on until uh, a quarter past nine, British summer time. But what we're looking for is, was it right to uh, include Broad and Anderson together? That's a, a talking point. Give us a call on that or a Skype. Um, should we have had a spinner? Should Leach have been in there? Should we uh, be doing squad ro rotation in England, which I certainly don't think we should? Where were the all-rounders? Why didn't we have... I mean, this has been an absolutely solid winning part of the England game over the last few years. We've always got all-rounders. Where are the all-rounders? You can't call Mark Wood an all-rounder. The nearest thing we've got to an all-rounder, I guess, is possibly uh, Ollie Robinson. Um I just don't recognise the team. I don't think Chris Silverwood is a particularly good coach. And I certainly don't think he's a, a brilliant selector. I think the whole squad rotation thing is absolute nonsense. Um, oh, let's have a look. We've got a, we've got a comment in the box. Uh, Jost Hobbits, if tomorrow morning's session won't bring at least two wickets, then New Zealand is absolutely way ahead. I hope I pronounced uh, your name correctly, Jost. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, I think New is. I think New Zealand are already way ahead, uh, and as you rightly say, unless we get two wickets and they're down to five, but they've got a really strong batting lineup. It does seem like uh, Jimmy Anderson has got the spook on Kane Williamson. Now Kane Williamson, another absolutely brilliant batsman, but this guy uh, Devon Conway, we're going to be struggling to get him out four times. Cheaply, I think. Oh, well, we've already failed the first time. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, Yost or Jost. I, I, I'm really not sure how you pronounce it. Of course, what you could do is just give me a quick call just so we can test out our technicals, Yost, on 0161 uh, 818 2009 or just Skype me on Pan on Fire just to see that all the uh, technicals are working there. So that would be quite useful. So, uh, yeah, give us, a, give us a little shout on that. Um, and the other things we we're talking about uh, are, are the reviews as well. I just don't recognise the team. I think this is a poor performance all round from the England team. Uh, and quite rightly, I think you're saying if uh, we don't get a couple of wickets in the morning, then we're going to be uh, going to be losing. And I think I did say on my well, I think my test live video last night that I'm pretty sure that uh, there's a good chance it'll be one one. I think there's a good chance we'll lose at Lords, but win at Edgebaston. Okay, so I said I'd do 15 minutes unless we get uh, any calls. Um, it takes a while to get used to the idea, I think, of people calling up on these shows uh, on YouTube when you're doing it live. Usually it's just someone talking and then sort of going through the comments, that sort of thing, which we, we've done already. Um, but the idea is I want to 
promote the actual live phone calls. You don't actually go on screen, it's just your voice. We've sorted all out the technicals and that's what we're going to do. So for today, I'm going to uh, bid you adieu and we're going to do another one, another live uh, broadcast between uh, 9 and 9.15 tomorrow and hopefully we'll get some calls then and make it stretch out a little bit longer. So let's hope for a great day's uh, cricket tomorrow. Let's hope for at least two wickets in the morning session. And I will see you soon.